So when you this report, which was one-sided, did not include the Republicans, uh, that they, quote, put a fatwa on you. Explain that. When it not only didn't include the Republicans, it didn't include the CIA. From my perspective and from the perspective of the other interrogators that were involved that I've talked to, it seems almost like some sort of, you know, secret tribunal, some sort of star chamber. It's like being caught up in a bad spy novel. You know, they think we're guilty of some horrible thing. We can't be prosecuted because what we did was legal and multiple investigations have shown it. So they had this uh, meeting, 50, 40 million dollars, five years, however long it was, but they already knew the result they wanted. They didn't give us a chance to explain anything. They didn't even bother talking to the people at the CIA or any of the, any of the people who were no longer at the CIA though had been involved, like the past directors. Then they issue this report that essentially stirs up all of the crazies and all the jihadists. And so now we're getting death threats and we're getting all kinds of things. How many times in your life have you had a law enforcement official call you up in the middle of the day and say, leave your house immediately? That happened to me a couple of days ago. Do you feel your life is in danger? Well, of course, you, you have to be cautious and you do feel your life is in danger. I don't mind. I do not mind giving my life for my country, but I do give mine, giving my life for a food fight for political reasons between two groups of people who should be able to work it out like adults. No one from the Senate committee ever called you to get your side? No one from the Senate committee has ever asked me a single thing. If they think I've abused somebody, they should ask me about it. They should point at the piece of paper, let me review the documents, and let me at least try to explain ourself, my, ourselves. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed has the opportunity to address the charges against him, but I don't. That's why I'm angry about this. They have a foregone conclusion. They put my life in danger. They put the lives of other CIA personnel that would do, and our families in danger for some sort of moral high ground. Dr. Mitchell, you have not been speaking out. We've been trying to get you on the program for a week now. You finally over the weekend said you'd do it. What changed? What changed was when, I, when you first started calling me to be candid with you, I was, I was very upset. I just, I wasn't ashamed that I had been involved in the program. I'm proud of the work we did. We saved lives. I don't care what the Senate said. You know, the, for all the, the presidents, the past three CIA directors, I got, an, I got a, an award for the work that we did. They told us we did a good job. They told us we saved lives. And I believe that we did. What change, and then this stuff comes out, no opportunity to defend myself. And I feel horrible for the nation. I feel horrible in part because this puts everyone at risk. And worse yet, it shows Al Qaeda and the Al Qaeda 2.0 folks, ISIL, that we're divided and that we're e e easy targets, that we don't have the will to defeat them because that's what they know. In fact, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed told me personally, your country will turn on you. The liberal media will turn on you. The people will grow tired of this, they will turn on you. And when they do, you are going to be abandoned. Well, I don't feel abandoned by the CIA. They didn't throw me under the bus. And I live in a world where real people live. I run into people, they recognize me, about 65% say, thank you for looking after our well-being. There's another small percentage that says, I absolutely abhor what you did, but I understand why you did it. And then there's another group of people that makes out the rest of them that says, I would never do that. It's better to let 3,000 people die than lose the moral high ground. From my perspective, I'm a big proponent of the drone policy, but I don't think that there was a moral equivalence between blowing up a picnic and killing granny and slapping KSM on the belly or waterboarding KSM as ugly as that was. I just don't see the equivalence. We don't have a targeted assassination program. If we did, we wouldn't have to be killing granny. We could get to the person that we intend to kill and kill those folks. It's just, for me, you can probably tell I'm a little agitated about this. For me, I don't want to die 
because the Democrats in the Senate don't have the courtesy to ask the CIA to explain what they view as abuses that occurred when there's other evidence, 60 million, I'm sorry, 6 million documents, and they cherry pick what makes their point out of it and put us in danger. Dr. Mitchell, we're so glad to have the opportunity to speak with you tonight. We're going to continue this. Uh, I want to tell our viewers tomorrow night uh, because there's much more to cover.